Okay. Hello, and welcome to another day of Triviamatic. We're going to uh, let everyone uh, get in today. We can, um, uh, we will, uh, I'm here in uh, beautiful New York City. As you can see the skyline, the Hudson Yards behind me. Um, so uh, um, we're going to be here. We're going to go through another great night of trivia here at Triviamatic. Uh, we have a new YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube, if you could do us a favor, if uh, you go to YouTube and then type Triviamatic, you will see the Triviamatic page. And we would really appreciate a subscribe because what we can do is we can start to stream live through uh, mobile apps and directly to um, um, YouTube will promote us, but we have to get a minimum of uh, uh, a thousand subscribers. So we are on the hunt to get a thousand subscribers. So I would appreciate it. That's Triviamatic. And then um, well, you can uh, subscribe. So we started at eight this morning and now I believe the last time I checked, we're at 30. So it's not bad for about an hour. So we've got the, uh, the site up and um, we will be, um, of course, all of the, the videos will be uh, streaming from, uh, um, from the YouTube channel, the live videos. And then uh, people will be able to play and watch it either through YouTube or some uh, various different uh, ways they can do it. Okay. And also, by the way, we are now testing, actually streaming the video live through the app. And that's going to be fantastic. That's, that's one of the things that we're really, really eager uh, looking to do is, is stream live uh, from the app. Uh, that's going to be a real deal breaker, a real deal changer for us. We're, we're quite excited on that. Um, again, if anybody needs to download it, the app is uh, Triviamatic.com. And I'll just give everyone a few minutes. My name, by the way, is uh, Todd Fabacher. I will be your host this evening. Um, I will also be the host uh, this weekend. So this weekend, we want to try also things a little bit different. This weekend, we want to try and do some topical trivia. Let's say, for example, like the Game of Thrones. So each round is going to have um, a much more specific topic. We're going to try to uh, see things a little bit different. You know, of course, we'll start with our, um, we always start with our, um, our th today segment. And then as we move on, we're going to go ahead and try different topics as, uh, um, as just a tester. So we'll have a few rounds. That'll be Saturday and Sunday night. All right, let's see. So we're on the top of the hour. Uh, let's see, everybody is settled in. And hopefully we are live streaming. You know, I talk to myself a lot, but uh, hopefully not tonight. All right, eight o'clock. We will give everyone about another 10, 15 seconds. You should be on new round. Also, if you have any suggestions from tonight, if you could email info at triviamatic.com, info at triviamatic.com. Any suggestions on how we can improve the app, how we can improve the experience. I mean, ultimately, Triviamatic is a pub trivia, and we will be um, broadcasting um, not only live to pubs, but also they can be hosted in pubs. So that's our ultimate business. But during the crisis now, we're um, going live online. We will continue to go live online uh, after the crisis, but uh, um, that's primarily what we're looking for. So if you, what we're really looking for is, is your feedback, some suggestions, and so that we can uh, uh, improve the entire experience. Okay, here we go from beautiful New York. We'll start with round one. History mysteries. On April 2nd, it's April 2nd today, here are eight questions about historical events that occurred on April 2nd of years gone by. Question number one. On April 2nd, 1513, what Spanish explorer first laid eyes in now the U.S. state of Florida? Hmm. Do you remember your history class? On April 2nd, 1531, what Spanish explorer first laid eyes on what is now the U.S. state of Florida? Hmm. Excellent. Okay, we have nice four options. Okay. 
Time is up. And the correct answer is Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon. Historians believe a story about Ponce de Leon searching for the fountain of youth is probably a myth. I would think so, because he was probably mostly looking for gold. All right. Oh, we've got great, great people today. Wonderful. Wow, we have a full house. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Wonderful, wonderful. And so far today, oh, two top players from the other night, Leia and Overleak. All right, question number two on, I'm sorry, what long-running prime, um, what long-running primetime soap opera starring Larry Hagman premiered on this day in 1978? I've got to get my glasses. Couldn't find that. So I apologize. That's what happens when you get over 50. You need your glasses. All right. What long-running uh, primetime soap opera starring Larry Hagman premiered on this day in 1978? Interesting question. All right, and the answer is Dallas. Ooh, Hagman played the oil tycoon J.R. Ewing on the show, which ran until 1991. Now, the real question is you'll know your age by how many people actually had a Who Shot J.R. t-shirt. Yeah, that would be me. I remember that. I actually had to ask my mother. She made me clean the floor to get it. <laughs> All right, we're looking good. That was a great one. Ooh, a couple of people missed that. So good job, Lisa. Oh, there we go. Nice, nice, nice. Good job, Lisa. All right. Question number three. On this day in 1982, Argentina invaded the remote Maldiva Islands, sparking a 10-week armed conflict with the UK. The uh, the Falkland Islands. The uh, Malvinists are better known by the English name by. Ooh, there we go. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Malvinas are better known in English by what name? So you have four options. Sorry about that. I pronounced my Spanish wrong. On this day in 1982, Argentina invaded the remote Malvinas Islands sparking a 10-week armed conflict with the UK. Malvinists are better known in English by what name? All right, let's take a look. The Falkland Islands. That's right, the Falkland Islands. Over 3,000 citizens of the United Kingdom live in the Falkland Islands, about thousands of miles from London. And we know how that went. Let's see the scores. Good job. Oh, that was great. Everyone did really well on that. Okay. Moving on to the next question. What classic sci-fi movie based on the novel by Arthur C. Clarke debuted on April 2nd, 1968? What classic sci-fi movie based on the novel by Arthur C. Clarke Debuted on April 2nd, 1968. I happen to have read this book. It's an excellent book. The question, was there a movie? Again, what classic sci-fi movie based on the novel by Arthur C. Clarke debuted on April 2nd, 1968? 68. And the answer is 2001, A Space Odyssey. Okay, the movie famously uses Richard Strauss's tone poem, also Spark Circle. The, let's take a look. Excellent. 
There we go. Good job. Over like yeah, we're keeping. We're staying about the same way. Everyone seems to be staying on par. Staying on par. Looking good. Okay. Next question number five. Rest in peace, Pope John Paul II, who died on this day in 2005. What was the Pope's birth name, which he ceased using after his, his succession to the office of Pope? In 1978. I'll read the question again. Rest in peace, Pope John Paul II, who died on this day in 2005. What was the Pope's birth name, which he ceased using after his succession to the office of Pope in 1978? I've been to the Vatican. I never actually got to meet the Pope, <laughs> but let's see. All right, and here we go. Here we go, Carl Woltia. I know I'm not necessarily sound, pronouncing that one right. Karol Woltia. He was a Polish-born John Paul II, was the first non-Italian Pope since the 16th century. Wow, wow, that was a change. And let's see, ooh, good job. Chi Pi Chan, got that one right, moving up, Chi. Excellent, good job. Okay, number five, number six, sorry. Happy birthday, Hans Christian Andersen. Which of the following is not a story compiled by Anderson in his fairy tales? Happy birthday, Hans Christian Anderson. Okay, I'll read that question again. Happy birthday, Hans Christian Anderson. Which of the following is not a story compiled by Anderson in his fairy tales? Mm, be careful. Could be a little bit of a trick question. All right, let's see those results. Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel is included in Grimm's fairy tales, but not Anderson's. That's a little bit of a trick question. Yep, it caught a few of you guys. Definitely. Congrats, Alea. That was nice. You got that one. All right. That kind of was a great question. All right. On this day in 1953, scientists Francis Crick and James Watson published a paper in the journal Nature describing the structure of what? Hmm. On this day in 1953, scientists Francis Crick and James Watson published a paper in the journal Nature, describing the structure of what? Don't think that's a quick question. I think it actually has a lot of relevance. There we go. A little bit of a trick, a little bit of a hint there. The correct answer is DNA. Watson and Crick, along with chemist, chemist uh, Rosalind Franklin, uh, who was pictured, helped discover the double helix form of DNA. And that, of course, is leading to our great scientists now looking for it. Great job. I know I give a little bit of a hint. <laughs> Look at that. Fabulous. All right. Let's move on to question number eight, our last question in this round. Uh, so far, um, the, looks like it's steady Eddie. It looks like we're doing great. Here we go. Are you ready? Happy birthday, Cuervo. A rapper born on this day in 1991 is a member of what rap group? Hmm. Happy birthday, Cuervo. The rapper was born on this day in 1991 
is a member of what rap group? Now, the interesting question you ask yourself that we try to do is, why are there so many different questions? What's the great thing about Trivimatic is that we try to really encompass a whole range of topics, historical, scientific, sports, pop culture. And this question is about pop culture. All right. Hope all your answers are in. Let's take a look. And the answer is... Migros. Quavo is the uncle of fellow Migros member Takeoff and the cousins, the cousin of fellow Migros member Offset. Takeoff, Offset. Kind of like that. Ooh, looks like a lot of uh, hip hop lovers in the crowd. Uh, sorry about that, uh, Lisa, but uh, good job, everyone else. Okay, that was surprising. I unfortunately did not actually know that. And that leads us to a new round. Okay. This round is Hickory Dickory Dock. This is round two. Hickory Dickory Dock. Quiet little ones, let the mother comfort let mother comfort you with a with a nursery rhyme. All right, Hickory Dickory Dock. You ready? Let's see how this goes. Question number one. Hickory Dickory, what seventh president of the United States got his nickname, Old Hickory, from his legendary toughness? Hmm. Once again, Hickory Dickory, what seventh president of the United States got his Nickname O Hickory from his legend from his legendary toughness. I happen to know this question, this answer. And I'll give you a bit of a hint as we get right close. I'm from New Orleans, so everyone from New Orleans knows the answer to this. And the answer is Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson. The general made famous with the Battle of New Orleans. As a matter of fact, he has a great, big, huge statue in the middle of what we call the French Quarter. The, um, the name originated from Jackson's soldiers in the U.S. Army. And if you're really interested in interesting military history, the Battle of New Orleans is a great read. All right. It looks like everyone got there right, attended their history classes on this one. Cheapy Chan. You should have known better. You've actually been to New Orleans. All right, let's go to the next question, number two. Doc, Pittsburgh Pirate pitcher Doc Ellis famously accomplished a no-hitter in 1970 under what unusual condition? Doc, Pittsburgh Pirate pitcher Doc Ellis Famously accomplished a no-hitter in 1970 under what unusual condition? Oh. Let's think about this one. The options are rather unusual. Anybody care to guess? You have a few seconds. Let's take a stab. And the answer is... He was on LSD. <laughs> Ellis dropped acid thinking he was pitching the following day, only to be reminded that he was, in fact, supposed to take the mound. That's interesting. I wonder how that worked. You'd have to YouTube that one. And okay. Leia, good going. Good call. Everything back up on top. That's it. I'm not sure I would have picked the LSD either. Hmm. All right, let's go to the next question. Question number three. The Mouse. What 1928 Disney cartoon is, despite its confusing title, considered the debut of Mickey Mouse? The Mouse. What 1982 Disney cartoon is, despite its confusing title, considered the debut of Mickey Mouse. Hmm. 
Mm. I love Mickey Mouse. I actually, if you've ever been to Disney World, it's nothing like going to the historical Mickey Mouse Museum there. And you would be able to see the answer is Steamboat Bill. Stone, Steamboat Willie. Sorry, sorry. Steamboat Willie. The title of the short parody of Buster Keaton movie, Steamboat Bill Jr. That was right. Steamboat Willie. I remember that. Yes. Okay. Let's see how we did. Okay. All across the board. Who doesn't love Mickey? <laughs> Loving Mickey. Great. All right. Question number four. Ran up the clock. What is the title of the Salvador Dali masterpiece that features a stopwatch along with three melting clocks? Great question. And if you love Salvador Dali, I will have to say that one of the most incredible museums was a really surprise to me in St. Petersburg, Florida. We was, I was stuck there for a weekend with nothing to do in Tampa. And I'm like, what can I do? And I went to the Salvador Dali Museum there and was unbelievably surprised and, um, and it's happily surprised. It was excellent. Okay, ran up the clock. What is the title of the Salvador Dali masterpiece? that features the stopwatch along with three melting clocks. They also have the Lincoln painting there, which was unbelievable. Okay. The name is The Persistence of Memory. Salvador Dali also designed the logo for the lollipop brand, Tupa Chops. Okay. And let's see, looking good. Do it for Johnny. I'm afraid you missed that one. But other than that, everyone looking good. Chi Chan. Get it off. You need to go to St. Petersburg. Great museum. All right. Let's go to the next question. Number five. The clock struck one. One is the name of a uh, companion album. Compilation album. Sorry. One is the name of a compilation album released in 2000 that includes all the number one singles of what musical act? The Clock Struck One is the name of a, uh, I'm sorry, one is the name of a compilation album released in 2000 that includes all the number one singles of what musical act? This is wonderful. The hint it was when they went digital, I believe. And the answer is the Beatles. With the success of one, the Beatles have number one albums in four different decades. Excellent. I love the Beatles. Okay, let's take a look at the score. Ooh, Lisa flipped to the top. Excellent. Really excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, looking good. Let's try to go to number six. Number six. The mouse ran down, down along with up, bottom, top, strange, and charm are the six flavors of what sematomic particle? Hmm. Once again. The mouse ran down, down along with up, bottom, top, strange, and charm. What are the six flavors of what subatomic particle? Hmm. Okay, coming to an end. And the answer is quark. Quarks combine to make protons and neutrons, but not electrons, nor Ferengi, even though quarks in Star Trek was the most famous bar. All right, let's look at there. Looks like we did pretty good. I think we should have put quarks bar, I say. Yeah. All right, 
Here we go. Question number seven. Look, and it's heating up. We're really, really close. Everyone's up and down a few points. All right. Can't miss one. You're going to drop. Question number seven. Hickory dickory. The long shot, the long shot Hickory Huskers win the state championship in what classic 1986 sports movie? Hickory Dickory, the long shot Hickory Huckster win the state championship in what classic 1986 sports movie? Afraid I did not see that movie. Mm -hmm. Hickory. Let's see. All right, almost to go. Let's take a look. The Hoosiers. The Huskers, based on the true story of Tiny Milan High School, who won the Indiana State Championship in 1954. Boom. There we go. Well thought out. Good job. Looking good. Excellent. We're moving up there. Lisa's staying on top. Here we go. We're going to be, we have, this is one big shot. Last question in the round. It's a big chance. Doc. Otis Redding forgot the lyrics he had intended for the song Sitting On the dock of the bay when he recorded it in 1967. Redding never got a chance to complete it, dying in a plane crash, which meant that what ad-libbed element of the song was never replaced. Doc. Otis Redding forgot the lyrics he had intended for the song Sitting on Dock of the Bay when he recorded it in 1967. Redding never got the chance to complete it, dying in a plane crash, which meant he was he, that what ad libbed element of the song was never replaced. All right, here we go. Whistling. Whistling. Sitting on the Dock of the Bay became the first post humanist single on the top. The, the, uh, the U.S. charts. Excellent, excellent. All right, good job. Everyone got that. Lisa, staying on top. Alea, staying close. That concludes round two. Fabulous. Here we go. The next round. This round is Beaver Fever. Damn, it feels good to be a beaver. These eight questions are about the busiest workers in the wilderness. This is a multiple choice round. Beaver fever. Is that like cabin fever? Like everyone has? I walked out of my, my apartment this morning and I walked down, there was three other guys there. And I'm like, what are you guys doing down here? They're like, I was told to go for a walk. <laughs> okay, question number one. The humble beaver in one of these national symbols of what country? The humble beaver is one of the national symbols of what country? That's great. Beaver, very productive. Let's try that again. The humble beaver is one of the national symbols of what country? Are they friend or foe or country? What do you think on that? Busy little beavers. And that's time. And the answer is Canada. The act to provide uh, for recognition of the beaver as a symbol of the sovereignty of Canada passed the Canadian. Canada's Parliament in 1975. Good job. Okay. I've seen lots of beavers. And uh, if you ever go, there's a beautiful area outside of Calgary. It's called Banff. 
the Bath Springs Hotel. It's beautiful, a great place to go skiing. But if you go in the summer, it is extraordinary with lots of uh, beavers around there. All right, next question. And let's take a look. Lisa's staying on top. Uh, it looks like everybody got that right, except Tim. All right, sorry about that, Tim. All right, here we go. Question number two. Castorum is a substance that comes from beaver's castor glands, located just beneath its tail. Believe it or not, this beaver butt stuff is used for what purpose? Hmm. Castorum is a substance that comes from a beaver's castor gland, located just beneath its tail. Believe it or not, this beaver butt stuff is used for what purpose? That's a, excellent. I'm curious to find that answer. I can't think of that one. And the answer is to flavor food. Wow, didn't think of that one. Like the beaver butts, and I cannot lie. <laughs> Thanks to castrum, they smell like vanilla. Castrum is sometimes used in perfumes. Wow. Didn't see that one coming. Let's see who eats beaver butts. Not that many. <laughs> we missed that one. I'm afraid I'm with you. Tyler Foley, good job. We got that one. All right, next question. Not much movement. It's only two people got that one, right? Okay, question number three. Benny the Beaver is the mascot of what university located in the town of Covilius? Hmm, and where is that? I wonder what city that is. Benny the Beaver is the mascot of what university located in the town of Covilia? All right, here we go. And the answer is Oregon State University. Oregon State University. Hmm. Great job. Let's take a look to see how we did. And congrats. Lots of uh, lots of correct, correct ones. Good job. Oh, we got a real heavy crowd tonight. All right. Lisa's back on top. Back on top. Great, Lisa. Congratulations. Let's go to um, question number four. Kindly, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver extended their hospitality to the protagonist of what classic 1950s children novel? I'll read the question one more time. Kindly, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver extended their hospitality to the protagonist of what classic 1950s children novel. That's not the TV show, Leave it to Beaver. I don't think there was a miss there. There was, I guess, as time went on. And the answer is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. All right, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. And great job, Lisa. Fast on that, everyone. Tyler Foley, excellent. Good job. Overly, sorry about that. Do it for Johnny. Looks like you didn't do it for Johnny that time. All right, moving on. Question number five. Okay, Boomer. What's the real first name of Beaver Cleaver on the classic black and white sitcom, Leave it to Beaver? Who 
Who doesn't remember? Beaver to Beaver. Right after, what was that? Right after the Brady Bunch in the afternoon. TBS. 1982. Okay, Boomer. What's the real first name of Beaver Cleaver on the classic black and white sitcom Leave It to Beaver? All right, here we go. And the answer is Theodore. Theodore. Beaver was played by actor Jerry Mathers. Ooh, Lisa got that wrong, but still on top. Still on top. That's what to get the lead. Alaya, good job. Tyler Foley, topping out the top three. All right. Theodore, I remember that. Great job. Okay, question number six. On what television network could you watch Hijinx and Nobert and Dragnet, the titles of the 1990s show, The Angry Beavers? Number six. On what television network could you watch the hijinks of Norbert and Dragnet and the title characters of the 1990 show, The Angry Beavers. That's interesting. But one doesn't belong. The answer is Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon, work in Dragnet. Best friends um, is a tree stump named Stump. Must be a complex friendship. All right, here we go. See how that went. We have some cartoon fans. Ah, good job. Stumped a few people, but overall did great. And so I, uh, I want to uh, thank you guys for letting me host tonight. I, uh, I'm a computer programmer by day, but I like trivia. Not necessarily know if I'm a great host, but I do like to play. I do like to code, too. <laughs> Question number seven. A stylized image of a beaver among branches is the easiest recognized logo of what Canadian retail brand? Okay, I'll read that again. A stylized image of a beaver among branches is the easiest recognized logo of what Canadian retail brand? Hmm. That's a nice one. And if you're wondering, so we coded Triviamatic. Again, if you please email info at triviamatic.com and let us know how good or bad my coding is. All right, the answer is Roots Limited. The, I the iconic Roots includes the retailer's name in Cooper Black font. Roots. And, ooh, Tyler Foley, good job. Let's see, so close. We got one little stump and boom, boom. Out you go. All right. This will be the final question for this round. Are you ready? Question number eight. Don't call it beaver fever. There's no evidence that beavers carry the intestinal disease with that nickname, which is caused by what parasite? <laughs> That's fine. Don't see Justin as an option. Don't call it beaver fever. There's no evidence that beavers carry the intestinal disease with that nickname, which is caused by what parasite? A 
that's a good one. Let's see how we're going to do on the board on that. That's a tough one. Number eight. The answer is Giardia. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Giardia. And let's see if we got that right. Okay. Good job. Lisa and Durham. Sorry you missed that. But uh, Tyler Foley and Alaya and Lisa are still on top. Riding up the bottom, you have a lot of people. Excellent, excellent. We had uh, uh, Sharon got that wrong, but it looks like she's playing. Hopefully you're enjoying tonight, this evening. All right, so let's take a look with a new round. So one of the things that we also want to do is we are actually started testing this. Believe this or not, we will be able to live stream through the app. So actually... What we're actually hoping to do is stream actually in the app. We've got a little ways to go with it. We got some testing, so we would just actually be able to you'll actually be able to hear and see right from the app if you so choose. Um, a couple other things that we're trying to do were um, actually even um, potentially talking with um, some other charities. We're hoping we're outreaching to like United Way or things like this or other organizations that are really struggling to raise funds during this time. That hopefully they can host uh, trivia events, and we're we're offering it for free to everyone during this time so that if you know any type of uh, um, nonprofit that wants or even for profit that wants to try to connect with uh, people, um, either try to raise funds off of it or try to help someone, you know, feel free to contact me. I'm Todd at um, info at trivimatic.com and just just say you would like you have something in mind and I'm, I'll be happy to call you and just give me a phone number. So anything to try to help people through this um, difficult time. Okay, right now, through this difficult time, we've got another pick three. Round number four. Let's see how difficult the round is. Pick three. The round is a little bit different. Instead of asking questions, we'll give you a category, and you must select the three items on the screen that fit that category. You'll receive full points for the three correct answers, half points for two correct answer, and no points if we're only one correct answer. So that's actually incorrect. So if you only get one, there is uh, no points. So you get no points. Here's question number one. States of matter. States of matter. Question number one. Do you remember your chemistry class? Number one, question number one, states of matter. Okay, let's take a look and see how that goes. It's a solid, gas, and liquid. A solid, la gas, and liquid. Vapor is a gaseous state of liquid, usually water. All right, let's take a look. Who paid attention in chemistry? Looks like everyone. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Happy Saturday's got two, but most everyone paid attention in that chemistry class. Excellent. Good for you. Let's see if you pay attention to TV and hear the next question. Law and order spin-offs. Law and order spin-offs. And as you can see behind me, a beautiful Chelsea, New York, where they happen to actually film the law and order quite often. We most lovingly get our entire street blocked off and we can't walk down it because they're filming the law and order. But it's kind of neat. Kids liked it when they were young. They used to film that all the time. And what was the other one? Uh, the Blacklist. If you know The Blacklist, it was filmed all the time in Chelsea. Chelsea Piers. You know, all that. It was fun. Right by the High Line. If you ever come back to New York, 
Two blocks over is the hotline. It's kind of nice. Actually. All right. Let's take a look. See what we get. The law and order. The three would be um, special victims unit. I think they're getting blocked. Criminal intent and L.A. Special victims unit, criminal intent, and L.A. Law and Order L.A. was canceled after just one season. Just one season. Let's see who paid attention to TV. Wow. Here we go. Tyler Foley in a commanding lead. Excellent. Alea, Lisa, popping out the top three. Overlook coming up. We're getting close. Gonna, gonna have to hit it all this round. All right, a couple of yellows. Good job. Actually, thanks. All right. Except we have a new one. Levon. Levon's in, but he didn't get that one right. It's all right. Law and order is a new thing. Next question number three. Things that repel vampires. Three things that repel vampires. All right, three things that repel vampires. The quietness of the evening. Also, again, being from New Orleans, who doesn't love vampires? It was awesome growing up in New Orleans. You would walk down the street with the CP oak trees, and you knew something was in those trees. If it wasn't a vampire, it was Anne Rice. And the answer is garlic, holy water, and silver. Garlic, holy water, and silver. Look, he's scared. Vampires are said to be weakened, weakened by sunlight, but moonlight feels just right. And we're looking good. People like their vampire movies. Maybe you've read the book. If you haven't, Anne Rice. It's the best. Very good. Next we have it. The next question is Civil War Battles. Pick three Civil War Battles. That, of course, is the Civil War of the United States. Civil War Battles. A little bit of moment of silence. All right, let's see if, how we did in history class. And the answers are Gettysburg, Antium, and Bull Run. Bunker Hill and Saratoga were battles in the Revolution War. And looks like we got a lot of yellows in that. A lot of yellows there, but it looks like the top four are staying the same. They got all three. A couple other people. Excellent, excellent. Hannah Jones. Good job. All right. We're about halfway through this question, this round. Let's see if we can pick it up. The people on top are staying there. They're staying solid. Question number five. Phases of the moon. Phases of the moon. I don't see blue. Where's the blue moon? Blue moon. I will spare you the singing. It's my blue moon. My blue suede shoes. The phases of the moon. It'd be interesting to see what phase we have tonight, but I can't. Welcome to New York. Can't see anything. <laughs> Blocked by trees. Blocked by buildings. 
Phases of the Moon, question number five, last run. It would be the waxing crescent, the waxing gilbus, and full. The gilbus moon pictured comes from the Latin word gibbous, gibbous, oh, the gibbous moon, which means hump. Is that like hump day? And we're looking good. Excellent. Excellent. Everyone did extremely well in that. Very, very good. All right. We're coming up. We're doing well. Top four is not moving. You guys are rock solid. Question number six. Jobs held by Homer Simpson on the symptoms. The symptoms. Simpsons. Yes, that's the great thing about Trivia-matic. We throw you for a humdinger. You might be a scientist, but if you don't watch The Simpsons, you might not win. This would be three jobs held by Homer Simpson on The Simpsons. That's a tough one. I'm not even sure I know. I just know one. Three jobs. Okay, here we go. Let's see it. That would be astronaut, blackjack dealer, and fortune cookie writer. Homer Simpsons is voiced by Dan uh, Castellina and first appeared on television along with the rest of his family and the Tracy Altman show uh, short Good Night on April 19, 1987. I remember the Tracy Altman show. That's astronaut, blackjack dealer, and fortune cookie writer. Ax Ooh, looks like that. Lisa, that's it. See, it's tight. You got to get it there. At the end of the day, it's diversity. All right. And a tight, tight, tight round, but it's still close. We're still within very, very short distance. Here we go. The last question. Oh, is it the last question? No, the second to last question of the round. And it is shirt collars. Shirt collars. Looks like predominantly men's shirt collars, but shirt collars nonetheless. Some could be unisex. Shirt collars. All right. That's a big question. Let's take a look. Got better. If you're not got it, take a guess. And here we go. The answer is crew neck, boat neck, and turtleneck. Crew neck, boat neck, and turtleneck. The term boat neck refers to the cut of shirts worn by sailors in the French Navy. Ooh. And let's take a look. Okay, solid. Everyone got the most everyone got that right. I would have been a little question on the boat neck there, but Vive la France. Here we go. The final question in this round. Question number eight. Publishing houses. Choose three publishing houses. This would be print publishing houses, if you need clarity. Predominantly print. Many of them don't really print anymore as much because the vast majority of the sales seems to be digital these days. All right. Print publishing houses, or simply publishing houses. And we've 
reached the end of the question. And the question is HarperCollins, Penguin Random House, and Simon and Schuster. It's interesting. All are right near the, uh, um, very close to uh, um, Rockefeller Center, especially Simon Schuster. I think they're in Rockefeller Center. Okay, let's see how we did. Boom, boom, boom. Green, almost across the board. All right, still the top five. It's running close. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. So, drum roll, that leads us to our final round. Our final round. Now, this is, as everyone knows, answer fast. This will make and break it. This will make and break it. Answer fast. Right? This is the final question of the night. It consists of five clues that get progressively easier. The faster you answer, the more points you get. But guess carefully, once you've typed in and submitted an answer, you're locked into whatever points are left on the timer. You're, if your answer is correct, you receive all those total points. And if your answer is incorrect, you receive no points. But remember, speed counts, especially since the top are so close to each other. Speed counts because the, the number of points you make based on the speed. Ready? Here's the first clue. What am I? What am I? The first hint. My name comes from a type of tree that once grew plentifully along my coast. Its wood produces a deep red dye, and my name means ember, as in like, as in red like ember. The, the hints get progressively easier, but I'm going to type this in. Remember, be careful a little bit with extra spaces or something, because we had someone who put spaces at the end. I think they said they had trouble, but we have updated that, but just be careful with that. I'll read this one more time. My name comes from a type of tree that once grew plentifully along my coast. Its wood produces a deep red dye, and my name means ember as it, as in red like ember okay decisions decisions and then I'm going to move to the second hint five four three two one hint number two my largest group of indigenous people who are the Tuquanas who speak mostly Portuguese my first emperor Pedro I fled Portugal and came to me when the French invaded. So, I am not Portugal. My largest group of indigenous people are the Tequina, Tequina, who speak mostly Portuguese. My first emperor, Pedro I, fled Portugal and came to me when the French invaded. So, I'm not Portugal. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Moving on to clue to hit number three. Any doubts, thinkers? Get a little extra time because once we get to clue, clue three, the points come down. All right, here we go. Clue number three. Scientists studying me discover an average of 700 new species in places like the Amazon River and Italia National Park every year. No, uh, Itia. Titia. Itatia. Itatia National Park. Sorry about that. I need to get my glasses or learn English. Maybe both. 
going to read the hint one more time. Scientists studying me discovered an average of 700 new species in places like the Amazon River in Itatia National Park every year. Okay. Let's move on to hint number four. Speed it up a little bit. I was the host of the 2016 Summer Olympics. My athletes are known to dominate in volleyball, which is not surprising, but with my 7,000 miles of coastline and stunning tropical beaches. I was host to the 2016 Summer Olympics. My athletes are known to dominate in volleyball, which is not surprising with my 7,000 miles of coastal stunning tropical beaches. And the final clue, one of those beaches is the famous Coca Cabana, Coca Cabana, located in Rio de Janeiro, which is not my capital. My capital is Brasilia. Neither is it Sao Paulo. It's Brasilia. With Australia created their own city just for their capital. One of those beaches is the famous Coca Cabana, located in Rio de Janeiro which is not my capital. My capital is Brasilia. Hint, hint, and hint again. That's the final hint. Let's take a look. This is gonna make it. Drum roll. Can you feel the anticipation? Huh? Huh? Brazil. Brazil, officially the Federative Republic of Brazil, is the largest country in both South America and Latin America at 8.5 million square kilometers and with over 211 million people Brazil is the world's fifth largest country by area and sixth most populous country and there we go let's take a look Tyler Foley on top Alea overlook oh Lisa oh sorry about that you, you did great tonight. Did great. Uh, John, um, John did well. Hannah, also great. Madison, kicked it up at the end. Molly, sorry about that. Durham, 10. Tim did great. Uh, happy Saturday, students. Nice pick. All right. Looks like we did really, really well. Everyone did excellent. Well, I'm glad everyone came. I appreciate it. I hope uh, everyone get along and... Had a wonderful time and a wonderful evening. So we hope to see you again tomorrow night. Uh, again, if uh, um, we're going to be trying different things, we want to try to get some feedback. Again, that's info at Triviamatic.com. If you have any suggestions how we can improve the app, improve the content, um, any suggestions you might have. Or, as I indicated earlier, if there's someone that wants to um, try to do a... Uh, um, to help a nonprofit or someone, even any type of business that during this time, we're happy to offer a Triviumatic for free um, so that we can um, help anyone that, that would need it. Thank you all. Uh, live from New York, this is uh, Todd Falbacher and Triviumatic. So have a great night and a great evening, and we will see you again tomorrow.